This is Valley News Live at 6. Did you ever have sexual contact of any kind with at your home? I did not. Did you ever have a sexual contact with in her car or anybody else's car? No. Have you ever had sexual contact with at the West Fargo High School, either before school, during school, after school, or any other time? Never. A former Teacher of the Year denies all sexual allegations against him. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Today, Aaron Canodal took the stand to defend himself. He's accused of having a sexual relationship with a 17-year-old student in 2009. Canodal was on the stand for a majority of the day, saying that he had the best intentions in helping the alleged victim. Canodal admits to speaking with the student on the phone and says it happened so often because he wanted to make sure she didn't go down the wrong path. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop has been following the trial for us. A rosary tightened his grip. Aaron Canodal took the stand. He I says the student student accusing him of an inappropriate relationship was looking to him for help. Would reach out to me more and more um, through the month of January. Canodal said the student came to his classroom multiple times a day. He says he doesn't give his phone number to students, but they can get it from a parent sheet. And eventually, the accuser began texting and calling more and more. I did not tell her it was okay, uh, but I did not tell her it was not okay either. Canodal says the calls started getting longer as the student talked about personal problems she was having at home. He says he ended the phone calls because he thought she had a different relationship in mind. I told her I had heard a rumor, and I was concerned about that rumor, and that... Um, I believed she had started that rumor. The prosecution questioned Canodal about the post-it notes in the book the accuser said he wrote to her. The day where we would actually cuddle together as we fall asleep. And you didn't write that? Nope. Canodal denies writing any notes to the student. He also told the court what he has learned over the last year. Uh, one of the hard lessons was that just because you're trying to do the right thing, um, things do not always turn out okay. In Fargo, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. Testimony ended today with Aaron Canodal's wife on the stand. Marie Canodal testified that she never goes out of town for work and never did in 2009. That's when the accuser claims the inappropriate relationship happened and said she was shocked when the Bureau of Criminal Investigation reached out to her about the allegations. Did you tell him what you knew? I said that I had no information about any contact with the student and that he was a good man and I didn't have any information for him. This trial will resume on Monday. To see all of the coverage from the past week, click on the Aaron Canodal Trial tab under News on ValleyNewsLive.com. Well, to our weather, very gray and cool out there today. What a way to end a week. Let's head over to Hutch Johnson to see if the sun will be peeking through for the rest of the night. Hutch? Well, for some of our viewing area, we do have sunshine out there, and it's warming things up in places like Jamestown and Devil's Lake. They're kissing 60 degrees. 50s here in the Red River Valley, 40s out east, and look at down near the South Dakota border where we have some showers. So if you are in the Ross Holt area, if you're in Hankinson or Lidgerwood, some passing sprinkles will continue through the early evening hours. For Fargo, I can't rule sprinkles out, but I don't expect anything too heavy. Temperatures generally in the 50 degree range as we go through the evening with an east wind at around 10 miles per hour. That warm weather we saw to the west is heading our way. I'll have details on that and talk about our next chance of rain here in just a few moments. Rain is, is good right now, but we'll take some warmth too. Warm is plenty nice. All yes. right. Thank you, Hutch. The USDA has confirmed avian flu in a commercial turkey flock in Lemoore County, North Dakota. This is the second case documented in the state so far. The other is in Dickey County. The flock in Lemoore County has approximately 69,000 turkeys and about 2,000 chickens. The location has been quarantined and the flock will be destroyed to prevent any further spread of the disease. It came as quite a surprise when a hotel manager noticed that his building had been run into and the driver was nowhere to be seen. It happened around 2 at the Roadway Inn in Fargo. Total estimates are about $10,000 in structural damage. A T-bar had to be put in to support the building. One man still on the loose, another is in jail after a chase through West Fargo overnight with speeds reaching 96 miles per hour. West Fargo police lost track of the car while trying to stop it for speeding and reckless driving. The car was later found in a field where it had hit a cement pillar and flipped onto its roof. A search of the area found this man, Al Sotelo, laying in a nearby field. 
A 25-year-old from West Fargo was arrested for fleeing from law enforcement. No sign of the second man. He's wanted for fleeing and reckless driving. Emergency crews responded to a rollover crash today at the intersection of Main Avenue and 45th Street. Authorities tried to control traffic in that area during the crash, and so far there's no word on injuries. No charges will be filed on two officers who shot a drunk driver in Jamestown last month. Police say Lee Ellingson took police on a chase through town after a convenience store employee told police that Ellingson appeared drunk. The chase ended with Ellingson being shot and taken to the hospital after he tried to hit an officer with his truck. A statement released by the Stutzman County State's Attorney's Office says the officers were justified in the use of force and the evidence shows it was necessary in order to make the arrest. It's Friday, time to get a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. We have two today. The first is Stacey Loomis. Her picture is on your screen. She's wanted for possession of controlled substance and drug paraphernalia. And Michael Schaff is also wanted for possession of a controlled substance and drug paraphernalia. Here's his picture. Call law enforcement if you have any information on them. The Minnesota Senate is moving to lift a ban on gun suppressors, even as Governor Mark Dayton has promised a veto. Minnesota's Senate and its Democratic leader had shown little interest in expanding the state's gun laws this year, but a rural Democrat led a successful attempt last night to legalize suppressors along with a handful of other changes to firearm law. Senator Lyle Conan's suppressor ban repeal was added to a package of crime and law policy changes. Governor Dayton has vowed to veto any bill with suppressors. Advocates of those suppressors say that they're used to prevent hearing loss and improve aim by cutting down on recoil. It seems there is no shortage of apartment buildings in the metro every year. More apartments are built and fewer single-family homes. If you're trying to transition from apartment to house, finding something affordable has become a challenge. A local realtor tells us people have a tough time finding homes in that $250,000 range. What do you think the city needs to do to get affordable housing? Um, I'm not sure how much you know we we can do. There's um, la there's labor costs, there's land costs, there's flood proofing costs. Um, I think some of the affordable housing in the future is going to be more attached housing. Uh, what you're seeing now, maybe more of the units will be multifamily. Officials with the city of Fargo tell us that apartments have become more popular over the past 50 years adding that the majority of the population are younger adults or senior citizens. That, they tend to prefer apartments. It's a career field that's always on the move, literally. Today, students learned about careers on wheels. In these specific types of jobs, the action happens behind the wheel. Local businesses showcased their vehicles and talked about the careers that use them to the students at Ben Franklin Middle School. The student and the goals for uh, this project is to open students' minds to different career opportunities. Additional careers on wheel presentations will be held at Carl Ben Eilson and Discovery Middle Schools in the coming weeks. Some much-needed rain fell this morning in the Southern Valley and farm fields soaked it up. Because it's been so dry, the rain didn't slow down farmers. They were right back in the field. Cold soil temperatures are more of an issue. That's some Richland County farmers who plant corn in early April. They're worried about whether their corn may have been damaged by yesterday morning's hard freeze. So far, this field was planted about a week ago. And from what we were looking at out in the field, it's planted about two, two and a quarter inches because at the time we were looking at a little drier soil conditions. We didn't know if last week's showers would show up. But it's sitting in good moisture right now. It didn't look like it took any damage from the cold weather that we had a couple nights ago. We received reports here at Valley News Live of a large number of barley acres in Foster and Eddy counties that were damaged by yesterday morning's freeze. Agronomists expected to come back because the growth point of the plant was at or below the surface. And don't forget to like Valley News Live on Facebook. You can get the latest breaking news, weather, and any news updates anytime on your feed. What do you do? All you have to do is search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed throughout the entire day. Here's something people will like. Later on Valley News Live at 6, Bison fans, you're going to have the chance to gather this weekend to tailgate and get their first chance to see this year's football squad. And closing out the work week with gray skies, some cool weather and sprinkles across the valley. 54 in Fargo, out to the west in Jamestown. Temperatures closer to 60 degrees. Details on a warmer forecast are next.